See, when women say that they want to be in charge and they want to control their own destiny and blah, blah, blah. Yes, that is what they say that they want and they might daydream about that. But the reality, the quotidian daily reality is that women do not want to be in control, at least not about the important decisions. More often than not, you will find that women want a man to take control of the situation, especially when it becomes difficult. When I say difficult, I don't mean when the situation becomes difficult, but rather when the decision becomes difficult, when there is great uncertainty as to the outcome of either path, of either direction, of either one of the decisions, she wants a man to take on that responsibility and she will happily cede it. She will demand often to take charge of the little decisions, the trivial decisions. Yeah? The, the trivial decisions like, you know, what kind of house or, 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 you know, what neighborhood or something like that. But when it comes to the issue of like, should we move from this city to that other city? She won't know what to do. She'll be tied up in her insecurity and her indeci indecisiveness. And I've seen this in every single woman, no exception. A lot of women who will watch this video will say that, oh no, I make my own decisions. You know, I'm a single mother, for instance, and I make my own decisions and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 but that's of necessity. Uh -huh. That's the key issue. It's necessity. When a woman is on her own, right, and she's got a kid or two and no man around, yeah, of course, she's gonna be forced to make the decisions. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if a woman is with a man, she will forgo the decisions. She will cede the decisions to the men. And in point of fact, she will crave for the man to make the decisions. And this is where so many soy boys fail. Because they buy the feminist nonsense that women want to be in control of their own destiny, blah, blah, blah. And so some soy boy has some woman in his life, right? Girlfriend or wife, right? And this cucked out soy boy figures that he should talk to the woman, to his girlfriend or wife, and that they should come to a decision together, right? And so he doesn't want to push the issue or perhaps he's too afraid. Perhaps he himself is too indecisive. And so he tries to get her to make a decision. And he finds that this irritates the woman to no end. It pisses her off. It pisses her off that the guy is shoving the responsibility of the decision onto her shoulders. It bothers her tremendously and creates enormous resentment of her towards this soy boy cuck who can't make up his mind, who can't decide, or who for very stupid and misguided reasons, reasons provided by feminism, thinks that the woman should make the decision. She resents the guy and hates him and she'll wind up leaving him. Mm, leaving him for a man who doesn't have these hangups. Yeah, and that's the truth of it. And that's why so many of these soy boy cocks are always surprised that they have a miserable marriage and their wife or girlfriend is so resentful of them and why the wife and girlfriend wants to cuck him with some, you know, a macho, toxic masculinity, right-wing Nazi, racist bigot, right? <laughs> As these soy boys call us, call us regular guys, right? Yeah, because see, a woman needs a man to make the decisions. And she does not want to be the one doing them. She doesn't, she hates it, okay? She wants the illusion of being on board the decision. And, and, and to, to be like, to, 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 to have the pretense, that's the word I was looking for, the pretense that she is a part of the decision. And that it wasn't just he decided and, and she had to just go along with it. No, no, no. She wants to have this pretense, this illusion, this fantasy that they came to the decision together. But the reality is that she doesn't want to make the decision. She wants the guy to take the reins of the situation and, and drive their car, their destiny, towards the destination, the direction that he decides. And she wants to be a passenger. That's what she wants to be. She wants to be a backseat driver. Yeah, that's what she wants to be, ultimately. Every woman, no exception. Again, let me soften the no exception thing. Yes, of course, there are some battle axes who are with some guy, and therefore, they have the opportunity to have the guy actually make the decisions, but these battle axes actually want to be the person who makes the decisions, the big decisions in the relationship. Yes, there are such battle axes. They are few and far between. They are, okay? And more often than not, you'll find that those women are extremely masculine. Um, 
you know, they were tomboys when they were little girls, right? And, and they were jocks in college, you know, and had a lot of sex. And, you know, they're, they're, they're more masculine than men. I mean, women, rather. The very feminine women, the, the very feminine, very delicate, the, 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 the you know, the soft face, you know, the, the whole package, you know what I'm saying, right? These very feminine women, they do not want to make any decision at all. And it can be incredibly frustrating for the guy because they keep saying that they want to participate in the decision. But like I said before, they want the pretense, the illusion, the fantasy that they are participating in the decision-making process and that the decision itself is not just by the man, that she had serious input and point of fact, she had a 50-50 uh, uh, say in the decision. She wants that illusion, but not the reality, okay? And so you as a guy who understand this, you have to play to this and you have to act as if you are bringing her into a decision that you've already made. And how do you do this? Oh, kimosabi, simplicity itself. See, what you do is that you present options, right? Uh, a possible decision whatsoever. Let's just say for the sake of argument that you're living in, in one town in say Syracuse and there's the possibility of a job in LA and a job in New York City, or better, Kansas City. You're living in Kansas City and there's a possibility of going to LA and there's a possibility of going to New York, okay? Now, you do the pros and cons and you come up to the, your conclusion. And let's say for the sake of this conversation that you decide that New York would be much better and LA, though it has a lot of pros to it, it has too many cons or New York has better cons, whatever. But you come up with a decision on your own without the woman around, of course, and you decide that you should go to New York, right? So how do you handle it with the woman? You go to her and you say the following. You say, honey, there is this possibility of us going to either New York or Los Angeles. But the thing is, see, in Los Angeles, we would spend so much money on cars and on this and that and the other. And in New York, we'd save so much money. And New York is so much more exciting, so much more exciting for you. And there are so many more possibilities for you for your job as cake decorator or whatever the fuck she's doing, right? And there are so many things that you could do in New York, but in Los Angeles, there's nothing. There's nothing. And the only person we know in New York, in Los Angeles rather, the only person we know is uh, Phil and his wife, Peggy. And, and isn't Peggy such a bitch? And didn't you never like her in college? So why would we move to Los Angeles? I, I don't know. I think that maybe New York is the right decision. What do you think? You see, you manipulate her. That's what you do. You, you guide her in the direction of the decision you want to have made. And then she'll be able to say, yeah, I, I joined the decision. I helped in the decision-making process. Yeah, we're partners in our relationship. We're equal partners. Yeah, that's what you do. Because women want the illusion. They don't want the reality. And she is going to convince herself that her input and, and everything that she said was uh, instrumental in the decision to move to New York instead of LA. Yeah, she, she'll go on and on and on about how she gave so much input and, and, you know, because you asked her what she thought, but you'd already made up, you get the point. See, I don't have to elaborate it. Yeah. That's how you maneuver women. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to maneuver them. See, I mean, like, like you, I grew up with this illusion that uh, men and women were independent agents, right? And everybody was an individual and all the rest of it. And that uh, women were the equal of men and so on and so forth. And women have a lot of things going for them. Okay. They have a lot of things that men do not have and a lot of great qualities that men do not have. Compassion, empathy, this, that, the other, all kinds of stuff that, you know, that we don't have. But women do not have a capacity to make a decision. Mm -mm. They're great at committees. And, and committees, what are committees? Uh, committees are a way to, to like mushy the decision so that no decision is ever made or the safest possible decision is made, right? Women are great at that crap, right? But in terms of like leadership, real leadership, women suck at it. There is a reason that in history there are Exceptions you can count on one hand of effective female leaders. You know, going back, you got uh, Margaret Thatcher. You had, um, oh, what's her name, uh, the, the Prime Minister of Israel. Her name slips my mind right now. You had uh, Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, who else? 
Huh? You see my point? Yeah. And and men, Napoleon, Patton, you know, FDR, Stalin, Churchill, Hitler, all kinds of people who could make decisions and lead. Women aren't good at that, okay? And so we shouldn't be forcing them to. Hmm? We shouldn't be forcing them to be something that they are not. And this is what feminism insists upon, by the way. Yeah, it insists on women taking up a role that they do not want. In every single serious relationship I've ever had, every single one, there came a point in time where the woman basically said, oh, you decide for us. Hmm? And I was all convinced that, you know, I had to like make it be a co-decision, right? Idiot me. But I, I thought so. But no, they don't want that. They don't want that at all. And they hate the guy who forces them to make the decision. And by the way, you know, this starts from the very first date you have with the girl. Yeah. I, for instance, you, you meet some girl, it doesn't matter how, you know, you meet some girl and you call her up, text her, whatnot, this, that, the other, and you decide that you're going to go on a date, right? She wants you to make the decision where to go. She wants you to be like clear that we're going this way, okay? And for many women, not all women, okay? I mean, I would say, well, about 40%, okay? 40% of women view that first date and view how decisive a man is insofar as going to a certain place. They view it as a compliance test as to whether the guy is very decisive, okay? It could be that there are other signals that you're putting out that shows that you're extremely decisive. And so, you know, when you go out on your first date, you're indifferent as to whether you're going to go to this restaurant or, or that bowling alley or whatever the fuck, right? But many times... If you are very indecisive, or, or let me put it this way, if you express indecisiveness as to where to go on the first date, okay, first or second or fifth date, right, early in the relationship, if you, if you show too much indecisiveness and we, should we go here, should we go there, it's going to be a huge turnoff to her. She's not going to want to be around you, okay? She'll want you to be decisive. And she won't mind going to a crappy place so long as you made the forceful and direct decision to go to this crappy place. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's the indecisiveness that women don't like because ultimately women don't want to be with another woman. They want to be with a man. Okay, so I think that you get my point in this whole video, right? Be decisive in every situation, but don't be tyrannical, okay? A lot of guys confuse that. They think that being decisive and being very forthright and saying we're going to go in that direction it means that they have to be a hard ass, an asshole in every single situation. No, for crying out loud, okay? You, you, gotta, you gotta know when, when to be decisive and forthright and direct and, and just, you know, clearly leading. Other things, the vast majority of things, you can let it slide or let her take care of it, right? Again, you know, like you're, you're on your first date and, you, and you're, you, you've shown decisiveness in other factors, right? And she says, well, should we go to the Thai restaurant or the Japanese restaurant? And, you know, if she, if she goes on too long, then you say we go to the Thai restaurant, period, right? But you can just say, oh, go ahead, you decide. I don't really care, okay? And, and that can slide. And on a lot of things, you, in fact, want to let the woman make the decision, okay? You cannot be this hard ass who's totally controlling a woman every second of the day because she's going to hate you. Because nobody wants to be under the thumb of a dictator who uh, you know, tells her what to do every single second of the day. She doesn't want that. She will resent that, right? But on the big decisions, that's what I'm talking about. On the big decisions of the relationship, you know what you're doing. You better think it through, have clear decisions. And if you need to, quote unquote, talk with her about it, if you need to sort of like come to an agreement, because it's a big decision, like the hypothetical I gave before, of moving to LA or New York, right? You have to have your ducks in a row and give her the illusion, but always be the one who's actually making the decisions because you'll be happier and she will be happier.